came from their humble abodes wow. to catch a jolt from my electrode. Yeah, there's pictures. I wanted you to see the book. I wanted you to see the cover of the book that I was talking about, Scarazona Travel Guide to Arizona's Spookiest Spots. It's at bookstores everywhere, most particularly here in Arizona. We're going to be talking about another scary book in just a moment. But I want to tell you about something that perhaps might take the fear of rising gas prices away. Yeah, sure, they're coming down now, but you know that they're probably going to hit bottom and go back up again. So we're going to give you a $100 gas card, okay? Here's how it works. You watch Montel from 3 to 4, or... Judge Maria Lopez from 4 to 5, or Judge Karen from 5 to 6. Any one of those three, and you will learn a daily code. Then you watch MASH at 6.30 on AZTV for your cue to call, your chance to win a $100 gift gas card. Who's giving it away? Those rascals, those little poltergeists at AZTV. I'm happy to be part of it. Uh, don't forget, just watch the shows this afternoon and then watch MASH and find out when to call. What a time this is for vampires. That's for Patrick, sure. Patrick, <laughs> when you started writing Cure for the Curse, did you have a clue? I mean, already there had been a number of books out uh, by uh, the, the uh, Stephanie Meyer, the, mm -hmm. the Twilight Lady. But is that why you did it? Or... Did you just say, this is a story I want to write? It was more of the latter, more of uh, this is a story I wanted to write. It's uh, I've been writing uh, young adult vampire books since I was a kid. Um, and I guess, you know, uh, around around that time, uh, like Bram Stoker's Dracula was made into that amazing movie. Yeah, you and, liked it. Oh, yeah, I liked it a lot. And it was a very influential time in my life. Yeah. So that was that was a big motivation. But Anne Rice has made a gigantic career oh, yeah. out of simply vampire books. She's the queen. Now Stephanie Meyer is the princess. Yes, she sure is. <laughs> and she's selling millions of books to an enthusiastic audience of teenagers mm -hmm. and young people. Mm -hmm. Why the appeal of vampires? Well, um, there's... I, the thing about vampires is that they are the most human monster out there. And uh, they look human, they do human things. You can't tell a vampire, you know, um, if they're, they're, their habitat is the night. And so um, I think the metaphor there is that they are, they represent humans who have hurt us in the past. And it's a very intimate thing to be seduced by a vampire. and. Their, their standard attack is the bite on the neck, which is a very, very intimate thing, a very, uh, very, very Yeah, vampires uh, are sexier thing. than Frankenstein. Oh, yeah. I mean, well, they, they're always really good-looking, really confident, really, uh, really together. They're always very old. They have the, the wisdom of living for a long time, and they're very powerful. And they, the idea of being held under the sway of something like that is... Well, it's very sexy. It's and very appealing. And their hair looks good, and they dress neat, you know, and they usually live in a pretty nice place, too. Yeah, yeah. Okay, but you wrote about fictional vampires. Do you believe in real ones? Um, I believe in real metaphorical vampires. What do you mean? I, I believe that there are people out there that uh, feed on the suffering of others. And, uh, and that's, you know, vampires feed on blood. I think there are people out there that um, you wonder how could they sleep at night. And well, uh, and we <laughs> refer uh, many times to attorneys as mm -hmm. bloodsuckers. <laughs> exactly. Uh, you know exactly. that kind of thing. And there is that categorization. But I've also read that there are physical conditions, medical conditions, that create some of the symptoms that are associated with vampirism. That, that's true. There are there are conditions that um, that make you more pale. That uh, I think it's called porphyria, where where if you ingest a little bit of blood, it helps your condition a little bit, you're, and you're pale, uh, and you're, you're thirsty, so it's, it, you can look like it. I, do, I, your, do your vampires stay out of the sun and only go out at night? Uh, yes, yes. I, uh, I, it's a classic thing. There's a, a the classic condition, staying out of the sun, staying away from religious items, uh, that sort of thing. I do have a character in there who is sort of in between. She's a... Uh, She's the daughter of vampires, but she was created special so she can survive in the sun, but she still you know, gets weakened by it. I dated a girl that always smelled like garlic, and we were <laughs> never attacked by a vampire. So maybe there's something. Yeah, it obviously worked. Uh, the, uh, the reality is, is that these well-drawn-out characters, I mean, we know more 
about Dracula. We know yeah. more about these vampires. We know more about some of the uh, characters in Twilight, for example, than mm -hmm. we ever knew about the Wolfman or Frankenstein. Mm -hmm. Why? Uh, I think because we've seen uh, Dracula so many times in uh, in books and in movies. I read a statistic where um, where it's only Sherlock Holmes who has appeared in more movies as a character than Dracula. So it's been oh, that's interesting. Yeah, we've been exposed to it over and over and over again, and the the myths have been refined and updated for our. Uh, for, for you know the current generation, and then upgraded again for the tr current generation, he's a he's he's so powerful as a symbol that it, it keeps enduring, and and the takes on that, like mine, like Stephanie Myers, like Anne Rice's, they they they're 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 so filled with metaphor that everybody can uh, identify with in one way or another. What did you think of Buffy the Vampire Slayer? Oh, I loved it. I, I was a big fan of the TV show because it was it was funny and it was clever, but there was still a lot of uh, a lot of human drama, a lot of teen drama that that every kid goes through, and that's my audience. That's that's what I'm trying to get across in my book as well. How long has this been out? Um, it was published in late '06, and um, I got a sequel coming out in late '08. Well, you still want to sell this? Oh, absolutely. Well, is it available in bookstores? Um, uh, it's available in some bookstores. Amazon. Yeah. Uh, it is on Amazon. Your house. Uh, my my apartment. If people want to come knock on my door, uh, PatrickVaughn.net is the best place. Yeah, I have it all. Yeah, don't invite there. people. Over. You're <laughs> writing about vampires. Oh yeah, I can't, can't let them Please in. Please don't do that. <laughs> I mean, you know, somebody knocks tonight. Look outside to make sure it's a kid. I mean, with I'll a bag. peek out the window first. Uh, a cure for the curse. Uh, what is the cure? Um, well, that's the mystery in the book. I uh, can't really give uh, that away. Uh, you but, son uh, of a guy, you're not going <laughs> to reveal, huh? Well, it, let's just say it might have something to do with a relationship. Well, that. yeah, like vampires. Have you ever seen a lonely vampire for crying out loud? <laughs> they get the best looking women. A cure for the curse. And what's that? That website again? Website is patrickvaughn.net. V A U G H N, like the man from Uncle. <laughs> this is Pat McMahon, the man from AZTV, and I'll be back in just a moment with some really serious, scary stuff about keeping your kids safe. Something strange in your neighborhood.